Hello, middle schoolers. Um, I'm happy and just encouraged to be back again with you guys, <laughs> being able to give this lesson. Um, and again, you know, my name is Isaiah, and here with me is... Hey, guys, I'm Gracie. And so, you know, today we are going to be talking about not underestimating your faith. So call me crazy, but I love to root for the underdog. You know, the Cleveland Browns, who's a football team, struggled to win a few football games every season. The unknown quiet kid running for student council, the dog with three legs at the park, there's just something exciting about cheering for someone that everyone else underestimates and doesn't think can succeed. Yeah, and I think the reason that I also enjoy cheering for the underdog is because I know what it feels like to be an underdog. Um, there's been plenty of times in my life where I felt like an underdog. And I think one of the moments that I remember the most is when I used to play softball in high school. As a freshman, they put me on the varsity team and I was so nervous. I was with a bunch of like juniors, seniors in high school, like just older kids. And I never felt like I was as good as they were. And of course I didn't play as often as they did. And so I remember one time it was a playoff game and we were losing by one. The bases were loaded and this is not, this sounds cliche, but this is true. And there was two outs and I was up to bat. And if I could just hit the ball, <laughs> like put it into play, we would win the game. And I remember just feeling so underestimated when I went up to bat. I was like, I know nobody in here believes I can do it. Um, and I ended up hitting the ball, thankfully. Um, I didn't strike out or anything like that, but I also didn't win us the game. So I left still feeling like the underdog, still feeling underestimated, but also really proud of myself for even trying. Um, so this week, we're going to start a three-week series called Underestimated. Um, and that's probably not a word most of us use in our everyday vocabulary, but I bet we've all felt the effects of that word in our lives. So what does it mean to be underestimated? Um, so simply, we can take it as it means to be undervalued, misjudged, not taken seriously. So in other words, it's just being seen as the underdog. Um, you know, maybe you have a teacher who sees you as just an average student. You know you're smarter than they give you credit for, but she continues to underestimate your abilities. Or maybe, like I was saying, you have a coach that won't give you the chance to start in the big game. And you know that if he did, he would see what you're capable of, but for some reason, he continues to underestimate you as an athlete. Or maybe you're forced to sit at the kids' table at every holiday. You know, apparently your family doesn't think you can eat off the fancy plates or hold your own in a conversation about adult things like politics or religion, even though you know you have plenty to bring to the conversation and you definitely wouldn't break any of the plates. So, but you're still banished to the kids' table because you guessed it, you're underestimated. So I think as middle school students, one of the areas you feel most underestimated, overlooked, or even looked down on in is your faith. You know, even though you agree that your faith is important, it seems like a true growing and deep faith is something only for grownups. You know, like think about it. Have you ever been around Christian adults when they're talking about spiritual things and they're using fancy words and phrases like sanctified or led by the spirit or cleansed by the blood and you're probably like what in the world are they talking about you know I go to church but I don't know any of these words that stuff must only be for grown-ups but I think it's more than just the adult talk that makes you feel like you may not you may not measure up in the area of your faith you know have you ever had any of these thoughts have you ever thought you know my friends and I try really hard to be good at church but it seems like the adults are always calling us out on what we do wrong or how we mess up. They act like we'll never be able to do anything right. Have you ever thought that? Or what about how can I really have a faith of my own when my faith has always been attached to an adult? You know, I believe just because my parents or Sunday school teacher or grandma or youth leader tell me I should believe. 
I never be able to figure it out on my own. Or what about, you know, what's the hurry? I'm so young. I'm just in middle school. I have, I'll have time to figure out this faith thing when I'm a grown up. Or am I old enough to even do anything about my faith? You know, after all, nobody thinks a middle schooler could know much about anything, especially faith, right? You know, I'm not even sure I believe. Have you ever thought that? Have you ever thought about any of the doubts that you might have or if you even do want a faith of your own? You know, chances are you've had one, at least one, if not all of these thoughts about faith once or twice. You know, I definitely had when I was your age. And honestly, um, you know, but I think the problem with thoughts like these is that they're causing us to underestimate ourselves. They lead us to believe that as a middle schooler, having and owning a real faith just isn't possible. And honestly, that just makes me upset for you guys, because if there's one thing I know about middle schoolers, it's that you have everything you need right now to own your own faith. And you may feel that others underestimate you in this area. You may even underestimate yourself, but trust me when I tell you that God certainly isn't counting you out when it comes to your faith. Yeah, and no matter if you're new to the Christian faith um, or just asking questions um, or have been following Jesus since you were old enough to eat goldfish in the nursery every week, some of you probably don't even know what a nursery is, but it doesn't matter. I think we can all agree on this. We've been underestimated. But the good news about that is that we're, we are not the only ones. You know, years after Jesus walked the earth, a guy named Paul was, was doing all he could to tell everyone about the way of following Jesus Christ. Paul was a leader in spreading the Christian faith. And because of that, he had a lot of, he had a lot of influence over other believers at that time. But sharing the message of Jesus was a huge job and Paul couldn't do it just by himself. So he recruited other people to join his team. And one of those people was a guy named Timothy. So Paul and Timothy traveled, um, traveled together to share the message of Jesus Christ. And over time, Paul became like a mentor to Timothy. You know, he encouraged and instructed him as a leader, both when they were together and when they were apart as well. Since texting and email obviously uh, weren't quite a thing back then, you know, Paul wrote letters to Timothy to encourage and guide him in his work when they weren't serving together. And in those letters, you know, Paul offered Timothy some words of wisdom on owning and not underestimating his faith. And here's what Paul said, and this is in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. You know, Paul started by affirming Timothy's genuine faith. Seems like a cool compliment. But what does that really mean? So what's the point in all of this? Well, I think that it's not always easy to figure out if something is real or fake. In order to identify if something is authentic, you need to look closely and observe. And this is exactly what Paul did to discover Timothy's genuine faith. In this passage, we read that Paul was affirming Timothy for his honest, true, real, authentic and certain faith. From everything Paul saw when he was with Timothy and heard about him when they were apart, Paul knew that Timothy had a genuine faith in God. Timothy owned his faith in a real way and Paul certainly wasn't underestimating him. And also what's cool that Paul reminded Timothy of the long line of, of other believers he came from, you know, the faith that was molded from, you know, from him by his grandmother and his mother, Lois and Eunice. First of all, how great are those names and how great would it be to have a Lois or Eunice in your life? I don't mean, you know, just a woman with epic names, although that would be pretty incredible. I mean, having 
adults in your life who model a genuine connection with God just for you. It's my prayer that each of you would have at least one tangible example of an adult passionately pursuing Jesus in your life, because just like it, it, it or excuse me, because just like it, it, it made a difference in Timothy's faith, it can make a huge difference in your faith as well. But here's what's funny about Timothy. For all the amazing elders and mentors he had believing in him, people like Lois and Eunice and Paul, he had just as many people who didn't. And unfortunately for Timothy, not every person in his life was supportive of his faith. Not, not everyone really believed he had what it took to lead and spread the message of Christ. See, you know, you see, Paul had put Timothy in charge of a church uh, that Paul had started in Ephesus. And some of the older people in the church there didn't value Timothy's leadership because he was younger. And because of that, Timothy might have been tempted to underestimate his own faith. And that's what makes this passage from Paul so important. It's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and in purity. Paul knew that Timothy had older people question his faith and leadership, but Paul wanted Timothy to understand that he could own his faith in spite of that. No matter how young he might have been, what little experience he might have had or what other people may have felt about him, Paul reminded Timothy that he had the ability to set an example for everyone. In his words, his actions, his lifestyle, his faith, Paul encouraged Timothy to not underestimate himself, but instead own his faith. And the same is true for you. No matter where you come from, how old you are, how much experience you have, or even what other people say or think about you, don't underestimate your ability to be an example to others in faith. And don't underestimate your ability to have a real, authentic relationship with God. Never underestimate your own faith. So instead of underestimating your faith, this week, I want you to own it. What does that look like? Well, for one, believe that you are old enough. It's time to stop making excuses and instead make a choice to own your own faith. You may not know everything, but you're capable of learning and understanding more than you ever have before. Embrace that the time is now for living a genuine faith. Believe that you are old enough to start growing in your faith. And two, pick an area of your faith to grow this week. Ask God to help you with just one area of growing your faith. Maybe for you, that means choosing a good circle of friends, regularly reading your Bible, monitoring what you watch and listen to, praying for your family, or making a church a priority. Whatever it is, identify just one part of your faith that you can grow in this week. Then do it. Take steps with God to grow in that area of your faith this week. And remember, never underestimate your faith. Believe that you are capable of a meaningful, genuine faith that can serve as an example to others. We hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you later. Bye guys.